George from the exchange. Coach, um, you mentioned before heavyweight bouts going back and forth. How important is it to not get into something like that this weekend? Um, but also, um, does it add any more, you know, more fire to the flame, I should say, to um, knowing what's at the end of the rainbow with a derby? Yeah, we're, we're well aware of what's what the next game looks like, but our full focus is on this game because, you know, you, you, we can't get ahead of ourselves. This is going to be a tough game. Um, with regards to it swinging both ways, I think that's naturally playoff football, right? You've you got to be prepared to absorb the pressure and you've got to make sure that you capitalise on the moments that you get. And I was pleased in the in the game at City Field that, you know, we start the game quick, we, we got the game 2-0 and then, you know, we were put under pressure in the second half. Now, there is elements of the game and the game at Cincy that, you know, we have to go through and we have to look at how we minimise the amount of pressure that we absorb, how we control Cincinnati in the moments where they, you know, become strong. We know set play, they're dangerous. So, you know, it's all part of preparing for the game. We know it's going to be a tough one, but, you know, the guys are really, really up for this one. Oliver? Hi. Uh, Oliver with Hudson River Blue. So this is going to be the third game that you play against Cincinnati inside of 12 days. We were just talking in the hallway. We're not sure that this happens anywhere else in, in soccer or football. What's it like to be that um, familiar with, with an opponent? Yeah, it's unique, right? We've never faced it. It's unique for us in the sense of the three-game series. Um, is actually going to be the sixth time that we've played this team because we played them in League's Cup and twice in the in the season. So um, I think that is the case, right? You become really familiar with each other. I think this game come in, there's going to be elements of um, all of the games that we've played. And I think now tactics play a very small part in the game because you know each other very, very well, right? You've got to be prepared to compete in the, in the game. It's now a playoff game for us, you know, this is more like player football that I know since 2020. You win and you you go through, you lose and you're out. So, um, you know, there are some considerations that I'm making in the sense of changing some things. If you go back to the first league game there, I thought we competed really, really well in a different way. So, um, you know, just trying to work through some small stuff to try and make sure that we have a strategy in the difficult moments. But like I say, it's playoff football now. So you got to be up for it and you got to be ready to go and uh, compete. Roberta? What lessons are learned from game two that you can apply in game three, considering the differences between the first game and the second game? Um, yeah, I thought our attacking game was much better in, in the second game. I think, you know, if you look at the the chances and how we create our chances, if you look at, you know, the intensity of our attacking play, you know, small things, but that normally is the way when you, you know, when you win and when you lose, right? You create more and you take your chances and, um, for us, it's about looking. At, I think for us, it's different. I think it's about looking at our away performances and looking when we had a threat on the road and when we were dangerous and taking those moments. We're typically always good at home and we, we, we play an aggressive form of the game at home. So I think we've done a lot of work this week on looking at how we make sure that we have a threat in the game on the road and why we've had that throughout the season. You mentioned to George just now that you don't want to have any distractions like the Red Bulls or anything. And yet, a couple of weeks ago, you and I spoke about the fact that Arsenal, there was articles that Arsenal was interested in you, and you had told me back then that uh, there was, you know, there was nothing there, yet those consi they consistently still are articles that, that we're seeing. Is there anything new that's changed since then? No, oh, listen, the whole story is news to me. Um, I said last week when I was asked about contact, there has been no contact from anybody outside of this organization with myself. Um, Listen, I can confirm I will be here next year. Thank you. All right, on to the Zoom. Chris? Hey, Coach. Um, just uh, wondering if you can kind of confirm the um, injury status for, uh, for the game, specifically with Thiago Martins. And, and then also, um, when you look at the performance that Victor Lenich had um, on Saturday at, at Cincinnati, and, you know, he scored his first goal against Cincinnati. And you have Tavon returning, who's had a quite a career year. How do you approach, you know, you know deciding on on who to uh, to start on Saturday at the right back position? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, right? Um, 
I've said all, all year that is the toughest part of my job. When the roster is built the way it's built and you have the flexibility and the the depth that we have and the guys, the characters that we have, right? They train like animals every day. They're, whether they're in, they're out. Jovan, Julian, Agustino Haider, these guys, you know, Micha, when he's been out, have just kept themselves ready. And, you know, that's the communication I've had all year, right? You never know when your moment's going to come. Um, We've seen it, New England, Agostino Haider came, never played and then came in, scored the goal. And there's been many, many, you know, examples of that. Um, it's a tough one, right? It's, we're still working through it as a staff. You know, the shape of the team and the way that we approach the game might dictate how I go about it. You know, uh, there's been periods in the season when I played both of them in different moments. So, um, you know, that's tough. But we'll pick a team that is prepared to to go win. Micho was top in the game and Tavon has been excellent all season. Um, with regards to injuries, everybody is fit. Um, I think when you come through these playoff games, you get bumps and bruises, right? But apart from Malachi, who is still, um, you know, in his rehab for, for the broken leg, everybody is fit. Tavon is back in. So it's been a it's been a really productive week. It's been an intense week with guys training properly. So. Michael? Hey, Nick, it's Mike Gander from Blue City Radio. Uh, you mentioned fitness. Obviously, uh, last week I was at training and I saw that uh, Burke and Thomas Davis were both fit, but then Justin, Justin Heck uh, got the start. Uh, I guess it's a similar question, question to what Chris had just asked you, just the the idea of how you might approach this, uh, this match based on the performance. You got the job done. Sometimes you think, maybe I don't have to uh, change anything. Yeah, and I think we've had both ends of that this year, right? I've made some changes based off opponent or based off form and freshness, and we've rolled the same team probably as the season started to go. Closer to the end of the season, we've started to you know, go with the same guys. Um, just, I think I say all the time, my, my role is to find solutions and my role is to continue to push the team to improve and get results. And the Justin Hack decision was part of that, you know, it was unfortunate for Tane and for Burke to not be selected, but you know I think sometimes as the head coach you look at the game and you make some decisions based off, you know, some log some small things that you know the game needs, but also based off your gut. And you know I, I knew Justin would go in. Now we got to do the same. Tavon or Micha, you know I, I changed Maxi for Perea and Perea played away. Maxi played at home. You know there's many of those decisions that we've got to work through to look at, you know, putting a team on that is ready not only to start the game well, but then have a bench that can come in and improve the game based off what it needs. Uh, anyone has any other questions? Oliver? Yeah, I have another oh. one if I... If, let me know. Go ahead, Michael. Okay, sorry, Nick. Well, uh, one, more, one more. Uh, the team has had... Uh, some results you've referenced that you weren't really happy about. Uh, you used uh, Austin as, away as an example as well as uh, Chicago away. Other than the, the lineup choices that uh, obviously is something you can change, was there something that you saw in the preparation where you clearly uh, identified, hey, this is something we need, you know, we can fix because it's a uh, low-hanging fruit. I don't know if it, if it was, uh, you know, the training you know, regimen for the week. I'm just looking for something that you might um, have identified. No, I think ultimately, it's, listen, we could speak about this. I, I could sit for 10 hours and speak about this, and that 10 hours will be the review process of this season, right? You you, you referenced those two particular games. Um, now, Austin away, I was incredibly happy with parts of the performance. I was disappointed in the results. You know, it's very rare that I'm unhappy with the performance of our guys this year. I've always been happy with their approach, their, uh, the way that they apply themselves, the running numbers, the physical nature. Just the outcome sometimes is disappointing. You know, I, and I, I see that as different to being unhappy. Um, Austin, we play really well. We gave away two poor goals and we didn't take our chances. Now, Chicago away, you know, we had a three-game week where we go Chicago, Atlanta, Orlando, and we made a conscious decision not to travel with Tiago Martins and you know, other players that we then flew into Atlanta. For us, it's about, you know, you got to take the knocks in the season. you got to review at the end. And, you know, for me, it's steps to success. And the preparation of this group is something that I've been incredibly proud of this year because they've 
made sure that whether we've won a game or lost a game or played well in periods or been disappointing that they got on the training field and in the video room and worked incredibly hard and incredibly humble to make sure that we can gain a solid league position. And there's no different now, right? We came off the pitch at Montreal after being disappointed that we didn't get fourth, knowing that we would have to improve our performances to get through. And, you know, we had to improve from Cincinnati to the home game and we have to make sure that we... We push again on this one, and that's football, right? And that's part of developing. There's steps to success, and you know the one thing that everybody can see is that we're moving in the right direction. Oliver, hi, thank you. Just one more question. Um, you see you in the hallway here. Um, you seem really happy and relaxed and loose. Maybe the most relaxed and loose we've seen you before a game. Um, what is the mood? What's the mood in the club? What's the mood in the? the locker room what are the vibes i don't know about relaxed and loose um the, the the vibe is incredibly hungry with a huge desire to get through right um i think sometimes i come off relaxed because the training session was excellent today you know uh, there was three or four things that i wanted to get into the training and i wanted to see and i saw all of them and you're lucky enough to see me after not only have I came off and delivered the training, but I've gone in and done the re video review with the analysts that filmed the training. So um, it was mission accomplished from the training session today. Maybe that's where the looseness comes. Now, what I see in the team is real hunger. You know, all I've asked all year is to have energy, to have hunger and to have ambition in the locker room. And, you know, the desire to want to improve all the time has got us to where we are now. But we've achieved nothing, right? We're just on game three of the first round of playoffs. We want to deliver that game for our fans. But I also don't want to focus too much on that. I want to make sure that we prepare tomorrow properly and we travel to Cincinnati and, you know, we take the plane off on time and we land on time and the food is right. There's a lot of steps to, to getting a good performance in and I'm lucky here that I have an incredible group of support staff, front office, back office, that will give us every chance. Christian? Hi, Coach. Just building off that last question there, the end of the last game, the big penalty, great moment with the fans, there was so much energy in the building. How can you harness that energy and sort of almost bring it together with the intensity that I know you aspire to, to bring with the team in every game? Yeah, I think we, you know, it's trying to show our players, I mean, they know, they know anyway, but trying to show our players how much our fans really enjoy seeing that performance from our team you know not just the good football and the goals but the guts and the fight and the desire to make sure that we are the team that goes through the next game right and the, the performance at City Field had everything not only did we play well and create chances we the running numbers were excellent the desire to make sure that we didn't give the second goal away Matt Freeze makes everyone done their part right um we have to harness that you know we're lucky enough, I've been lucky enough to be part of many, many playoff away wins since I've been here. 21 was incredible, 22, you know, we did the same in, in Montreal. So, it's, you know, we've got we to gotta harness those moments. We've got to make sure that we play the football that our fans deserve and that we know we can play. And in the difficult moments, you've got to dig deep. And um, for us, we know who we are now. we just got to make sure that we go prepared and we deliver everything that we've got.